You're welcome back. Uh, our next hot topic is getting it right on International Day of the Girl Child. And so let's use this time to say happy Girl Child Day to every girl, no matter the age. Okay, so uh, we're going to, we are being joined by Frances Olisa Ogbonaya, a broadcast journalist and women in leadership advocate who will be helping us make sense of what ever is surrounding the celebration of International Day of the Girl Child. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. It's nice being here. Okay. I understand. Uh, okay. Happy, happy Girl Child Day <laughs> to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Okay. So um, the theme for this year is invest in girls' rights, our leadership, our well-being. Let's try to... Uh, understand what made the international body choose this team okay first of all uh, the celebration of the girl child and um, has come of age and then and i think before now is the much of talk 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 without much of actions i think that's that that would be one of the things that formed uh, the the decision to to team today's uh, today's celebration in in, in that manner uh, because we've been talking, it's time to invest. Because without proper investment, um, all our talks would be nothing but rhetoric. I think that's why the United Nations and other bodies decided to uh, 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 concentrate more on investing in the girl child. The governments, the lots of agencies, they've been doing much on talking about the girl child without much of feasible investment and related investment. So I think that's why we have to actually make it explicit this time around. You have to invest in the right of the girl child, invest in her well-being, invest in her education, and everything about the girl child. We are asking for investment now. We're not saying, we're saying less of the talk. People have talked too much about the girl child. Most of you have just paid too much eye services and lip services to the issues concerning the girl child. We want to see, we want to see investments. No, that's why. So what is it that the girl child needs that every other child does not need? Because you advocate for the girl child, the boy child is not being considered. So what are the special things that are missing from the lives of a girl child that must be concentrated upon? Okay, I have to look at it from the Nigerian context. You know, in the Nigerian context, as long as you're born a girl, you're, you're already losing one zero to the men. It's like that. You know, uh, because first of all, have a lot of social cultural factors that hinder the girl child from, or that hinder, or could hinder a girl child from actually maximizing his or her destiny. For example, most of us grew up, grew up in homes where they would tell a, a girl, go, go and you you concentrate more on cooking because you concentrate more on running house just because you are expected to end up getting married to a man who they would send to school or send to go and learn handwork. So they don't really. No, it, it, it's expected, it's such a culturally, some cultures, you have it in the southeastern part of the country where I come from, you have it in the northern part of the country, a girl child is actually not expected to do much. They're expected to actually groom yourself, groom yourself or be groomed only for you to get married. So, and, but that's not what life is. They can be whatever the men are, especially in leadership. They can be whatever the men are, even in career. We want to tell the girl child to start asking questions which is what uh, social culturally they are not allowed to. In many cultures in Nigeria, a girl is not supposed to ask questions. You're not supposed to be heard. You're not even supposed to speak. You're only supposed to speak when you're asked to speak. In so many places in Igbo culture, uh, there are many places in man, even in Southwest, if a woman would enter, they would say, no, you are a woman. Don't go there. Don't touch land. Don't, uh, you are not supposed to build. You are not supposed to own homes. Then you suffer with your parents, as far with your parents, uh, maybe you, along the line where your parents are trying to raise wealth for the family, build houses, you were denied some certain things as, as much as they denied your brothers. But when they are gone, when your parents are gone, they will say you cannot inherit because you are a girl child. Then the boys begin to inherit. Forgetting that when, when, they were, when your parents were building their houses, you were denied some comforts just like the boys so that they can raise this money for whatever they were building. And when they finish that, they, they deny you those assets. So, so many things, as far as Nigeria is concerned, you are already disadvantaged as a girl child. So um, that's why we, we want to say more about the girl child. I'm so, asking more for the girl child. So is it a matter of policy or just a matter of orientation of the people that you're seeking? Um, 
all engagement policy works together. Mm. For example, uh, uh, policies are policies are, are, are collections of uh, social beliefs, orientation, um, uh, conventions around. They all come together to make policies. So, um, and policies in turn influence orientation. Mm. Whatever we make of, make make of policies today, as for the God child. The generation of my granddaughters, I wouldn't say my daughters because my daughters are already experienced, so I'm, I'm experienced now. The generation of my grandchildren, my granddaughters, will now begin to have a totally different orientation as a result of the form of the policies that I and my generation must have made today. Mm. So uh, they work hand in hand. Five plus one. Okay. So is that the investment you're talking about, or there's something more to this investment you're asking for? The investment we're asking, we're asking for, we're asking for investment, legal framework, legal frameworks, legislative fun, legislative actions towards the girl child. We want, we look for policies. What established bodies that will be responsible for the girl child? We are asking for ministry for the girl child, a, a ministry dedicated for the girl child to the girl child and for the girl child. We're asking for proper agencies, come out of ministries of the girl child. Even there are some some state government that have established special advisor on the girl child. Something, something on the girl child. That's not enough. We are asking for a full blown ministry on the girl child. A girl child needs to be encouraged. A girl child is a child who has been told for many years that she cannot be what she wants to be. And if we want to make them understand they cannot be what they want to be, we have to put resources in place to make them go to school, to make them uh, make, make uh, 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 the environment favorable for their employment. A girl child is advantaged in so many ways. You want to go get a job. As you, you become pregnant, they, they, they would some agents, uh, some organizations wouldn't take you if you're of a certain age because they know they believe you are go, going to be bearing children, they will not hire you. But they'll hire a man who is of same age with you. Why? Because some of them will categorically tell you, We, we realize that you just got married, maybe they're looking at your CV. We realize that, or they've done some background check on you. They'll say, We realize you just got married recently. So you expect you must be expecting a child, right? You say, Yeah, okay, if we hire you now, what happens if you become pregnant? But a man who is of same age with you, who also got married, will not be asked those questions. He will be hired. We are not getting hired on our competency. We get hired based on, they have to consider some factors before they hire us. These are the issues we are trying to look at. We want to look at, uh, we want to look at um, situations where a girl child will, will, will compete favorably in like the male, uh, the male child, uh, as, as much as the male child. And we need ministries to enforce this. We need legislative actions to enforce this. We want girls have to be speaking and we want them to speak out. Shouldn't that just be a department? Yeah. Shouldn't that just be a department in some of the ministries that we have? Women Affairs, uh, Humanitarian uh, Ministry, and so many other ministries that could talk directly to the welfare of the child and especially the girl child. Why do you need a full blown ministry? If it cannot work in the ministries that are existing now, how do you think a full blown ministry will work? Okay, um, before now, people didn't know that the full blown ministry on humanitarian humanitarian services will work until people began to take that into actions. A girl child is not a woman. A girl child is a child from from the point where she was born as a child, as a child, till when she's like 35, 40. That's a whole lifespan. A girl child, a girl child, in a girl, the ministry of a girl child, we we, we consider. The, the area of abuses, sexual abuses, uh, suffered by young girls, you know, molestation. Uh, a ministry of a girl child will take care of the issue of education, uh, social cultural factors where uh, cultures, customs where young girls are not allowed to go to school. A ministry of a girl child will talk about um, people, women who get abused, especially young women who get forced into marriage. So many, so many about the girl child. So much more about the girl child. Women is totally different. Women affairs is totally different. So I think we should concentrate more on the girl child. A girl, but because if you if you get a girl child perfectly raised, you have a a, a well groomed woman. Mm. So do you? I, okay, let me let me not ask what is on my mind right now. Uh, well, but how how how? <laughs> How far are you going with this advocacy uh, to the people that need to uh, get the right policies in place and all that? What is the level of success that you have um, achieved over the years? 
<laughs> over the years, we've, we've worked with agencies. Over the years, we've worked with organizations. But like I said, most times they end up talking, talking, talking with their actions. That's why most of us are not really girl child advocates. Most of us are women in leadership advocates. We, what, what we decided to do is to encourage women to get into political offices. It is when women like us get into political offices, we can begin to advocate for our own daughters, for our own girl child. A man doesn't know. A man doesn't really understand what we go through. They don't know what it means for you to wake up and get molested, molested by your father. They don't know what it means to get molested by somebody you're serving. They don't even know what it means to for you to lose your husband at age of at early twenties and you get kicked out of the house and you see a, 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 a three year old mother of three on the streets of Lagos. You understand? They don't understand. They don't feel it. They don't, they don't get children. They got nine months. They don't understand what it means. So that's what I call encouraging women to seek political offices, especially legislative offices where laws will be made. Even the executive, we don't know enough about this appointment where we are rubber stamps, where we, we even suggest things so that men will serve, to the governors will serve, and the, you know, and they will say, okay, okay, okay this is your know, policy, now nice one, we are coming back to you. No, we are asking women, get into political offices. We have lost a lot in 2023. Let's make use of 2027. Strive, work hard, get these positions so that we can personally advocate for our girl children. Nobody can feel our post better than ourselves. Yeah, as you talk to the policymakers and everybody who is concerned, the, the, the stakeholders who will help bring this about, how much are you also talking to the women folk? Uh, because um, sometimes it, it, there is this uh, general understanding that the problem of women is the women themselves. So how much have that's you... That's you that's that, 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 I want to just stop there. I want to quickly correct that notion. People go about saying... And uh, women, they end up saying women supporting women is just a lip service. Women, the problem of women is not true. Mm. Men fight in the National Assembly, they break their heads. Are they not men? Mm -hmm. On those state deputy versus governor, are they not men? Go everywhere. Uh, Imo state governor has just removed his deputy and replaced with a woman. Uh, what, what, what was happening between them? Men fight men every day, but nobody talks about it. But one single thing between man and woman and women, they say women, no. I want you to know today that the problem of a woman is not a woman. The problem of a woman is the social cultural factors. The problem of a woman in Nigeria is the society we find ourselves. The problem of women are men like you who don't want to feel that women should not be on top of them. So go on. When you said men like you, I was looking at myself like, <laughs> <laughs> are you saying that I don't want women to succeed? Anyway, um, uh, this is how much we can take uh, on this segment. But um, if you can, in one minute, in one, in one minute, yes, 30, uh, 60 seconds, what would you tell the National Assembly if you had the opportunity to stand before them? Okay, um, like I said, I'll first of all, I will also going to suggest which I've been clamoring for the Ministry of Girl Child. That's number one. That's number one. You know, I, I also have to implore them to make laws that will make uh, uh, forms for women, elected positions, you know, free and set up a, a, a fund bank strictly for sponsoring women in politics. So that makes it because politics is capital intensive. And without politics, we can't get to legislative offices, we can't get to uh, uh, places of authority. Where can it, can it affect changes in the life of our girl child? Mm. All right. Thank you so very much, Frances Olisa Obonaya, for coming on the show this morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, Frances Olisa Obonaya is a broadcast journalist and uh, a woman in a leadership advocate. She was talking to us on how to get it right on the day that we're celebrating the girl child, which is today, 11th of uh, October. 2023 and remember the theme for this year is invest in girls rights our leadership our well-being we do hope that in your small corner wherever you are you're making sure that that girl that girl child is heard is seen and is recognized uh, because of her ability and the right to be a full human being with all the rights that everybody else enjoys and eventually this is how we're going to wrap it up on the show this morning we're hoping that you had a wonderful time and let's do it again same time tomorrow on behalf of the entire uh, family of the breakfast show on plus tv africa my name is nyamgul agaji saying thank you for being there <laughs>